have this really fancy soda thing from last Halloween. The expiration date's still good. But look at that. It's got like that luster dust shit in it. Anyways, this is what I'm gonna be drinking today. If I can fucking open it, Jesus Christ. It's okay. It's zero sugar and zero sugar always tastes funny to me, but it's fine. Look at that. That's so cool. Such a fun drink. Glad it wasn't expired. Since it is spooky season, I wanted to talk about something spooky today. AI. AI. Well, we're kind of gonna talk about AI. We're also kind of not. There's been a lot of discussion in the past few years about whether or not AI is good for artistic endeavors and like creative endeavors. Most people say no because AI is known to like take art from smaller creators and not really give them credit. Basically just using small creators in order to train an algorithm spitting up their own work right back at them. It's been a pretty big concern for a lot of people in the artistic fields and it was even a pretty big talking point when the writing strike was going on. This hasn't really slowed down AI at all in my opinion. If AI is slowing down at all I think it's because it's just kind of reaching the max capacity that we can do at this point. I personally don't think we don't have the computer software to really truly run a true AI. A lot of this is actually just like language models or machine learning. That's a different topic though. My point is AI is currently being used in creative aspects that are now pushing out smaller creators and it's been something that a lot of people have talked about and it's been a big concern for creative people. Mostly because people aren't using AI as a tool but more as like a cheat code. They're using it as a way to like jump ahead and not really learn and practice and get better at a craft but instead trying to already jump to the end, already have a finished project without actually putting any of the like heart and soul that goes into creative projects. I remember I had a friend that used to show me like a new AI song every day and he'd be like it sounds so good but to me I just could tell that there was no like heart behind it. At the same time, AI can be used as a tool for people who are already putting their heart and soul into things or are already being creative. So besides the point that AI just taking small creators work and using it without their consent, everyone's kind of agreed that this is not a good thing. I want to talk about what I personally believe is an example of somebody using AI to their advantage and going hand in hand with their own creative projects. Girly Girl Productions has been going semi-viral on TikTok recently. It's mostly dark humor girly pop songs and if you're on TikTok at all I feel like you've probably heard it. The most popular one is currently 10 Drunk Cigarettes. It's pretty popular on TikTok because it's really well written which we'll get back to in a minute. There's a great use of like twist in it as well as like using the fact that jokes and threes are very funny as well as we can talk about like the comedy K's in this song. This song is a joke. All of Girly Girl production songs are jokes. They're dark humor, kind of poking fun at like kids music or like pop music meant for kids that really have dark undertones. These of course are overtones, it's the point of the song, but it's kind of pointing out and laughing and making a parody of songs that sound so cute and friendly that are really just about darker topics that you wouldn't particularly want kids to listen to even though it sounds like a kid's song. I feel like it's also poking fun at the fact that like girls are really only focused on like one thing and that's like shopping or pink or glitter. Tin Drunk Cigarettes is really about like partying and drugs more than anything else. There's Girly Secret that is about murder. You get the point. They're comedy songs using cutesy like music and backgrounds and singing in order to punctuate their dark tones. And TikTok is kind of fighting right now about whether or not these songs are AI or not. Now I want to make it clear, the singing and like the music seems to be very clearly AI generated. You can just kind of tell with some of the notes they're either completely fake or maybe heavily affected using AI or autotune. Like it doesn't sound natural, it doesn't sound like a real person singing. Especially any song with whistling in it sounds nothing like a real human. The music itself is like super basic, super like pop, very bubblegummy, again just very very simple, very cutesy, and I use that word on purpose, in order to punctuate the fact that these are dark 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 topics and themes. The speculation comes in to the lyrics. Some people do truly think all the lyrics in these songs are AI generated. I'm of the belief that a human wrote the lyrics at the very least. To me, Girly Girl Productions feels like a person wrote the lyrics out but then used AI as a tool to actually produce the song. Going back to the points I made earlier, the rule of threes in comedy. In 10 Drunk Cigarettes, the main song is just counting 10 things girls need, three of which are cocaine. <laughs> 
These 10 things that a girl needs are one new vape, two lines of coke, three drinks from the bar, four more lines of coke, five guys fries, six heads of mine blunt, seven more lines of coke, eight pairs of shoes, nine BB belts, I don't know what the fuck those are, but everyone keeps saying <laughs> in the comments that a man could have not written this because they don't know what BB belts are. I don't know what they are either. And 10 drunk cigarettes. To be honest, I also don't know what a drunk cigarette is. And specifically, <laughs> The fact that they call out coke three different times in this refrain, especially the way they do it, there's like a nice pause between seven more lines of coke. It feels very intentional. It feels like a joke done on purpose, less like an AI wrote this song. Don't get me wrong, AI can be funny and have some funny moments, but it's normally on accident and it's normally because of absurdist comedy, less of this like intentional, like following a well-known concept of, of punctuating something through three times to make it funnier each time. AI is usually funny because it's nonsense, because it doesn't make any sense. It's funny because it's unexpected, it's funny because it's random, it's funny because it doesn't make sense, it's nonsensical. This kind of comedy feels like it follows a very clear line, even though it's also absurdist in its own way. It's the absurdness of pairing a super happy, fun pop song with things that you wouldn't necessarily associate with a pop song. I talked a little bit about comedy K's, that K sound tends to make people laugh or people find it a little bit funnier than most sounds. I don't know why <laughs> using that like coke has that sound in it so that three times in the song also helps to punctuate the humor in the song. I will say the verses even though there's really only one verse just repeated in this song are not very well written but again I feel like that lends more to the credit of this is a human person that maybe just started doing this kind of thing probably doesn't have a lot of experience which would be why they're using AI as a tool. They don't really rhyme they don't really flow very well and again it's just one verse repeated like two or three times in the rest of the song however the refrain is really really well written i think there's a good chance they might have written the refrain by itself and needed to write the rest of the song around it or maybe they use chat gbt or another type of ai to help them write the rest of the song or maybe it all originally started from an idea from chat gpt or some ai that they then morphed into what they wanted the person behind girly girl productions is still unknown so even if it is all just truly ai I generated content, somebody is still in there putting in the prompts. Tin Drunk Cigarettes is probably one of the most popular. There are a few more. Like I said, Girly Secrets pretty popular. They had one that was not very popular and honestly wasn't very good in my opinion. That was kind of playing on the whole cutesy, demure trend, which is another reason it feels like a person is behind it. To hop on trends like that feels more like a person trying to do that, less like an AI would just decide to write something about being demure and cutesy when that's a very niche TikTok reference I feel. Again, TikTok seems pretty split about whether or not they think AI wrote the lyrics or a human wrote the lyrics. I am in the camp that a human at least wrote the lyrics. Obviously AI did the rest of it, but to me it feels like a human person who doesn't have a lot of resources to them was able to write down these very funny songs but have AI do the rest. Some of the promotion for Girly Girl Productions has also been pretty funny in my opinion. On their own TikTok page, they have a lot of videos of their own songs on YouTube with like the pink glitter background and the lyrics over it. And the caption is usually something like, you won't believe what I found on my sister's iPad or we're banned from the internet now because this was in my sister's search history. This in itself is very funny marketing in my opinion. I feel like it calls to a specific crowd that's like almost like afraid of what kids will see on the internet while also also allowing their kids to just sit on their iPad all day. It reminds me a lot of a little bit after WAP came out, there was a parody song replacing a lot of the lyrics with like food references. And that sound was going around on TikTok and people were like, you won't believe what Kids Bop did to WAP, which is not true. It was not a Kids Bop song. It was just a regular parody song, but people believed it. People are easily tricked on TikTok. They don't really take a lot of time to like go look into things. It reminds me a lot of like the Tumblr fix stories back in the day. So to me, the marketing of of you won't believe what we found on my sister's iPad is very funny. I feel like it plays into that naivety and not caring to do any research that a lot of people on TikTok have. And again, they've done this many times. It's not like a one video thing. At the same time, however, if you just look on their TikTok page, you can tell that they're like also just promoting it regularly. Like saying, yes, this is my song. Here's where you can find it. Don't you guys like it? And those TikTok 
TikToks are like mixed in with the TikToks like, oh, you won't believe what we found on my sister's iPad. So it's very clear that that's like something they expect to get on new people's FYP and kind of bring them into the joke. That's definitely how I found them. I found one of those videos first. Like you won't believe what my sister found on the internet. Her iPad got taken away because this was in her search history, like that kind of stuff. One of those videos was the first one I found of them. This style of advertising their own music to me is so fun and I feel like it fits in perfectly with the vibe they're creating. And of course, since I have engaged with this content on TikTok, I've been shown other content relevant to it, which is a lot of like people reacting to it. And it seems like there's kind of an age range of people who get it and people who don't get it. <laughs> like the songs are a joke. I feel like that's very clear, but it seems like there's kind of a median range of like Gen Z and millennials or like younger millennials who find this very funny and they like it a lot. But the, there's kind of like these older millennials and older who don't really seem to find this funny. And to be fair, the amount of people who have seen who don't really understand the joke or intentionally trying not to understand the joke have been men. I don't know if that's just because older men are reviewing this more and women and younger people are more like doing voiceovers and stuff rather than doing a true like sit down review. Whatever the case may be, I've seen not too many but at least one or two reaction videos of older men looking at this, usually in a group setting which I find kind of weird, and just really not getting the joke. Like, like, I don't know if they're not understanding that it's dark humor. I don't know if they're understanding that women do know how to tell jokes because sometimes that can be a problem. <laughs> they just seem to take it very, very seriously. Like they speak a lot about how this is like promoting drug habits, which I really don't see. To me, this is very obviously like comedy and parody or if you will, satire. Some of their favorite words they never use correctly. The mystery surrounding girly productions has led to other theories, which I kind of want to briefly touch on. A lot of people think this is Danny Gonzalez. Danny Gonzalez as in the YouTuber who does make a lot of videos where he goes undercover and does things like in stealth mode to try and like trick people into thinking something isn't associated with him when he's really the one doing it. He's done this quite a few times which is why people think this might be him. Even on Girly Girl Productions own page they have him in the thumbnail of one of their videos and the caption spells out I am Danny. Um I don't think this is Danny Gonzalez. <laughs> I think Girly Girl Productions is definitely like using Danny Gonzalez Gonzalez to help promote themselves and like using the mystery to help people get people interested and stay interested and stay coming back. I just don't think this is Danny Gonzalez. He does write a lot of parody music and he does do this like sort of undercover thing. However, he already has this project going on with Ned Flames, which would be very, very similar. And I'm just gonna level with you guys real quick. Girly Girl Productions is funny because it is written by a girl. I know we technically don't know who wrote it, but if the same person who wrote it is the same person who was running the TikTok account, you can hear them in the backgrounds of some of their videos and they sound like a woman or a girl. That's what they sound like, of course we don't know for sure, and we don't know if this person that's running the TikTok page is the person producing the music, but I'm gonna assume it is. Because to me, this feels like if it was written by a girl, it feels very funny. If it was written by a man, some of these songs feel more misogynistic. It comes a lot with the fact that a lot of these girly girl production songs are kind of poking fun at the fact that girls in the media kind of feel like they're vapid and only care about one thing or are full of themselves or aren't very smart or very like airheaded. It's kind of like the Barbie movie pointing out the fact that Barbie kind of seemed like an airhead that was kind of lost in her own world. Like that made sense and worked because it was like a movie about First of all, her learning to become her own person and not be like that anymore, but because it was like a woman making all these points and like pointing it out. To me, if a man does the same thing, it just feels more malicious, especially in girly girl productions where there isn't really that turnaround at the end. In the Barbie movie, Barbie is presented at the at the beginning as very like, no thoughts, head empty. And then at the end, she becomes her own person. In girly girl productions, everything is just no thoughts, head empty, only drugs, glitter, and murder. If this is coming from Danny Gonzalez, it feels almost mean-spirited. And I'm never gonna pretend to know somebody's intentions. And I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me and say a joke is a joke, it doesn't matter who tells it. But it just doesn't feel like something Danny Gonzalez would do. The jokes made in Girly Girl Productions only seem funny if they're coming from other women. I have this bottle of nail polish and it's shaped like an ass. 
glass. I think this nail polish bottle is very cool. I like it a lot. So I went to go research this brand. I was like, hey, what other colors do they have? Maybe I'll get some more. And when I looked up this brand, that's when I noticed that the creator of this brand was a man who is specifically sexualizing women's bodies and that's why he made it an ass. There's a very thin line between like empowerment and sexualization or poking fun and enjoying your girlness and then being talked down to and downtrodden. And it does unfortunately come from perspective. There's a reason it would be considered punching down from a man, but making a nice lighthearted joke from a woman. Perspective is everything here. I'm not saying that a man could never write a song like Girly Girl Productions from the point of view of a woman. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that some of the Girly Girl songs and some of their lyrics are so almost derogatory that it feels like if a man had written them, it's not funny anymore. In my personal opinion, a man writing these lyrics feels like a man making fun of what he finds girly and if a woman or a girl is writing these lyrics it feels more like a presentation of girlhood that a lot of people expect with a dark twist underneath. A lot of the lyrics feel like taking things women are normally treated very poorly about like shopping like shoes like wanting money and flipping that on its head and I think it continues to be funny with the understanding that a woman wrote these lyrics. Once it's not written by a woman it feels mean-spirited and that's why I really don't think Danny Gonzalez wrote it and that's why I really don't think AI wrote it. Also AI has this weird thing where like won't let you talk about certain topics so that's another reason it might not be AI. All in all I feel like there's just somebody alone in their bedroom writing out these lyrics and then having AI sing them and do the music. Probably like a little self-project that they're doing for themselves and they don't really have resources to go bigger than that. Plus the, it, the mystery is fun they want to stay a little bit anonymous. AI is gonna be a great way to do that. AI is not gonna snitch on you and tell everyone that you're the person that wrote and produces girly girl productions. I love girly girl productions though. A lot of their songs are really funny. Some of them are not that great. And using AI as a tool can be really helpful, but it can also be kind of dangerous when you're using it more as like shortcuts. And it really can harm a lot of industries when people who don't have the patience to learn a craft try and use it to cut the line. Go ahead and give girly girl production a listen. I think they're really funny. I think they're hilarious. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about girly crew productions and AI in this video. I hope you guys are having a good fall season and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.